1865, a young man called Fred Godin from Jersey in the Channel Islands boarded the ship the Ballarat and along with 67 other passengers set sail for Auckland, New Zealand. Fred was just 22 years old and this is his diary of his journey. Leaving Jersey and his parents and siblings, knowing he would probably never see them again, was a source of great sadness to Fred, and he admits to shedding tears when he left. He writes descriptively of all the things you might expect on such a voyage. Music and dancing and singing on the decks in the evening, divine service in the salon on Sundays, and the beauty of trails of phosphorescence on the water after a nighttime storm difficulties of trying to eat a meat pie and plum pudding in the tropical heat and being disappointed that eating such luxuries was very difficult in such weather. On these pages Fred has copied the banners that were made to advertise the variety of entertainments to be laid on for Christmas Day. On Christmas Day itself Fred writes very sadly of missing Jersey as he thinks of never having a cold Christmas again and he speaks of how he believes he will not be missed by many people, just two or three at the most. He speaks of his older brother Thomas, who he believes would have been so glad to see him go, and he forgives his brother, yet still believes him to be an uncaring man. We don't know what happened within the family to make Fred feel this way towards his older brother. However, after he married and had children, he named one of his sons Thomas. The Ballarat arrived in Auckland on Friday the 5th of February 1866 after 103 days at sea. After six weeks in Auckland, Fred was still seeking employment. In one of his last entries, he bemoans his situation, saying, I hope that fortune will yet give me an opportunity of escaping the society of these confounded fleas, flies, cats and drunken soldiers. Oh, those cursed little creatures, fleas I mean. I think they are aware I am writing about them, for even now they are tormenting my legs dreadfully. However, I must put up with these petty misfortunes. Fred eventually settled in the Waikato area. He married and had a few children. After being a widower for ten years, Fred took his own life, leaving a note to say he was suffering from depression. He had shot himself. The year was 1920. He was 77 years old.